Hey guys, Treyarch here. I'm just going to be doing a little voiceover for this speed paint. The first thing that you might notice is that I have my references placed on either side of the drawing. I do this so that I can just like easily refer to them. It helps to have them just right by my side to um, facilitate the process. Don't freak out too much over the sketch. It, it's really just a layout of where your piece is going to go. Definitely doesn't need to be perfect, but you still want to have um, the anatomy mostly correct so that you don't stress out too much later. Um, one thing that I see a lot of artists do, which I don't recommend, is to use a white background for this sketch. It kind of blinds my eyes, personally. Um, but yeah, try to go for a neutral background. It definitely changes a lot. Um, so you see that I'm kind of playing around a lot. A lot of the artistic process for me is just experimenting and having fun and seeing what works. There's no like set, do this, use this color. Like just have fun with it. Um, and then I hid the sketch here just so that I could have a more realistic look. I usually hide the sketch um, about as soon as I put the base colors down. One thing recently I've been enjoying a lot is just adding little gradients in every single part of the image. So like you can see it's not just flat colors right now, but it's like a smooth gradient of several different colors. When I was less experienced as an artist, I kind of wish I knew how important clothing folds were. Like don't just draw little like soft lines for clothing, actually try to understand what goes under um, the clothing, like what, what are the muscles underneath the clothing that cause the folds to be there in the first place. So really be thinking critically if you want to have realistic art um, about what lays underneath every aspect of the drawing. Just a few quick tips here. Um, whenever you're doing shadows, make sure that it's a more saturated tone than the base color so that you can give it more life and it doesn't look so dead. Like you never want to have like a gray color as the shadow of a peachy skin tone. It just looks, it looks like they're a zombie. And also keep in mind the composition. Um, I used to do a lot of square compositions where the picture would just be uh, equal on both sides the height and width. But what really draws the viewer's eye in is when you have a rectangle either going up or going sideways, vertically or horizontally. And it really creates a lot more tightness and tension. You might notice that I'm also doing little like wispy strands on the hair. Just don't overdo that. I've seen so many people overdo it and it's very easy to do. But just just put in a few. Don't don't go too far. Another thing I've been enjoying recently is like using either the smudge tool or the blur tool to blur certain parts of the image, like as hair on the top you can see. Um, it creates sort of a focal point for your eye to go to. Also featuring that sloth belt, that's hilarious, I don't know why. One of my absolute favorite parts, and it's a little bit of a secret, is adding reflective light. It just gives the image so much dynamicness and interest. Um, so reflected light is basically light that borders an image, or like a subject matter like him or his ukulele. All you have to do is draw a little light, light like um, gaps around the subject matter and it helps to kind of pop them out of the background. You can just use white if you want or just a light color. As you can see I kind of played with sparkles and like different lines to add movement but sometimes more is less and that's something that takes a lot of learning to come around to. Like sometimes you need less um, elements in the drawing. 
how much I zoom in and out but seriously I can't I can't overstate how important it is to jump to different parts of the image and see how it looks from afar seriously like when you work up close it's easy to put on your blinders and just stare at it in the up close but when you zoom out that's all that people really see they don't see all the little tiny details that you did so Keep that in mind as well. In this part of the drawing process, you're going to see me editing the photo a lot. There's like 200 different edits I do to help the color pop um, and just finish it. It's like the finishing touches. There's so many to do that I just use an app called Polar. You can also use Adobe Lightroom for this, even though there is a fee to that for the computer. Yeah, and thanks so much guys for watching if you made it this far. I hope I was able to give you some of my knowledge. Um, just play around, have fun, and not everything I say you have to do. They're just some general guidelines, so hope you guys liked. Um, let me know if you'd like more tutorials in the future. Thanks guys!